high availability, a feature that many of you are probably interested in. So without further ado, let's take a look at how it works. Let's welcome senior trainer from Zabbix, Kaspar Smednis. Welcome to Zabbix Summit 2021. My name is Kaspar Smednis, I'm a chief trainer and today I will show you how to set up Zabbix H availability cluster in just 10 minutes. So let's start with a topic why Zabbix needs high availability and what is a high availability. So the main point uh, of high availability is uh, you must not have a single point of failure. Yes, a single po point of failure is any component which may just fail and after that your system will no longer fu uh, function. So you need to avoid that. Then you need to have some kind of redundancy, uh, which means your components will take over when some of the when some of them may fail, and you must have some management system. So your failures, if they happen, they must be visible. And so why Zabbix needs to have high availability? Let's say this is your typical Zabbix uh, setup. You have a Zabbix server you have all your uh, servers and devices monitored and then when something will go wrong Zabbix will send out, out messages using email, using webhooks or any other media which is defined. Okay, so that's fine, that works, but you know, something may go wrong at any time. And let's say your Zabbix server will just crash. Zabbix is a very stable system and it's very unusual for Zabbix to crash. But let's say maybe the operational system will crash or maybe you will run out of the disk space. So your Zabbix will no longer function and then you will no longer receive the messages. And then of course something will go wrong with one of your servers and you will not know about it and it will be a huge problem for you. So you want to have some kind of uh, high availability solution for Zabbix if something goes wrong to uh, automatically fail over and always be uh, informed. And now the next question is how to choose the proper solution for Zabbix. In previous years it was possible to set up high availability for Zabbix. There are a lot of solutions third-party solutions which will offer you high availability and you can choose between any of them. The question always was which one to choose because some of them requires expertise and you need to hire some specialist who knows how to set up uh, let's say chorusing. Some of them are cloud-based but the cloud provider will charge additional costs. So it was always a challenge, which solution will be best, which solution to choose and how to set up it properly. And this is very important. If you are uh, setting up high availability, it is very important to set it up properly. Because if something will go wrong, it may be even worse than, let's say, not having high availability. Yes, maybe the automatic failover will not happen and you will just be left with a non-working system or maybe even worse a split brain will happen and in a split brain scenario you will have two Zabbix servers doing the same and uh, sending double alerts and creating mess in a database or uh, I have even seen such scenarios when something goes terribly wrong and both nodes are taking over and basically killing each other. Yes, and all those scenarios may happen and you really want to avoid them. So what we are offering? We are offering a native edge availability solution by Zabbix company, which is easy to set up using our official documentation, which does not require any expertise in, in a HA uh, architecture, which will be officially supported by us. And we are using Zabbix database. So you know, you always have a database. Zabbix cannot work without a database. So the same database will be used to maintain this high availability. So how this works. 
First, you need to start Zabbix server in a cluster mode. Uh, we have new configuration options, node name and external address. I will talk about them later. And you need to set up them properly. And basically, that's all you need. O open configuration file, which is usually located in ATC Zabbix Zabbix server conf. Uh, two parameters which you need to change, restart, and you will have your cluster working. And now let's talk about the parameters. So first and the most important parameter is HA node name. And you must specify this parameter. If you will skip this parameter, then Zabbix will start in a single uh, server mode and it will not work as a cluster. Once you specify this parameter and you specify some name for your node, so in this example you, you can see that name of, the, name of my node is just zbx node 1 for the first one and zbx node 2 for the second one. So just set up this parameter and start Zabbix server and that's all you need to do. And you have your Zabbix server cluster already working. One node will be active and another, another node will be passive waiting to take failover. Both nodes will send a heartbeat to database every five seconds. Yes, and this is how it works. So every node uh, sends heartbeat. If one node fails, another node will just take over. And now let's talk about the another parameter. So first parameter was node name, and the second parameter which you also need is the external address. In this example, it is node one example com. So why you need external address? Because Zabbix frontend needs to connect to Zabbix server. And this will tell Zabbix frontend how to connect to Zabbix server, to which address. So this must be specified, otherwise the frontend may not work properly. Uh, about the frontend, if you have used Zabbix for a long time, you know that Zabbix uh, frontend has a configuration file and usually in all the previous versions it was mandatory to specify the Zabbix server address and port in a frontend. Yes, this was the way how frontend knows where to connect and this is no more. If you are using Zabbix in a cluster mode, you need to comment out those two settings. You need to open the configuration and comment them out. And then what will happen? Uh, the front-end connects to the database anyway. So the front-end will connect to the database. And the front-end will read this external address, which I showed you here from the database, and the front-end will know how to connect to Zabbix server. So simple. Yes. So basically you need to specify node name, you need to specify external address in Zabbix server configuration and for the front end you need to comment out those two settings and that's all you need to do. And now putting it all together. So you have two nodes, Zabbix node 1, Zabbix node 2. The Zabbix node 1 is the active one with a name zbx node 1 and address node 1 example com in this example. So front end will connect to this node. If the node 2 will take over, then the front end will read the correct address from the database and front end will co uh, connect to the other node. So you can see in this uh, diagram, you don't need any additional knowledge, you don't need any additional tools. Yes, just a few configuration lines and it will work. Uh, about the types of the nodes. So we have multiple statuses for each node. The node can be active and this will be always only a single node. Only a single node at a time can be active. Then you, have, you, you may have multiple nodes in a standby mode, which means all those nodes are ready to take over and, you may, and also you may have some nodes in a shutdown. What means a shutdown? The node was previously visible, but then the Zabbix server was 
shut down gracefully. And then there is another status, unreachable. And the unreachable means that the node was lost unexpectedly. Yes, maybe the operational system crashed. Maybe there is a network issue. So for some reason, the node is lost. So as the normal circumstances, you will have active node and one or two standby nodes and maybe some node in a shutdown when you are performing some operational system upgrade. But uh, when the node will go unreachable, this is the moment when uh, Zabbix cluster will take over and another node will become uh, active. How to see which node is active and, and, and which is passive? It is displayed on the front end, but if you will open the command line, you will notice that uh, Zabbix server as a process is started on every node. But on the main node, you will see the Zabbix server process. And you will see all those data collectors, pollers, trappers. You will see the configuration sinker, history sinker, a lot of processes. If you will look at the standby nodes, you will see that Zabbix server is started and the age availability manager is started. And that's all. Yes, so you have a Zabbix server started and HA manager checking the database every five seconds, ready to take over, and that's all. And if the failover will be needed, then the AH manager will uh, do it. Also, we have changed the front end. So now the system information widget contains the cluster uh, mode, which is enabled in this example, and the list of all nodes. Yes, I, I have one active node and two standby nodes on this example. So you can see very easy to see the status. You see the names, you see the addresses, and you see last access and the status of each node. How to switch? So for Zabbix cluster, you don't need to switch nodes. Once you will stop Zabbix on one of the nodes, another node will automatically take over. Yes, you just need to have another node in a standby status and then that node will take over. Uh, in this scenario, in five seconds, uh, if there will be a failure, it will, take, it will take a little bit longer, but it will happen completely automatically. So how it works? All nodes, as, I'm, as I said before, are reporting the status every five seconds. So when you are shutting down the node, it goes in a shutdown state and in five seconds another node will take over. What will happen if the node will just fail? Let's say you have a network issue. Then there is something which is called failover delay, which is one minute. Yes, so the standby node will wait for one minute and if in the one minute the active node will not uh, become uh, visible again, then the standby node will take over and will start Zabbix there. And that's all. Yes. So this is so simple. How to tune it? We have a few options. First, you can change the delay. So the default delay is the one minute you can change it uh, from 10 seconds to 15 minutes. In this example, I have five minutes. So I think one minute is fine, but uh, maybe you have different situation, which means you can uh, adjust this timing as you want. And uh, another question is how to get rid of the old nodes. Let's say you have some node which you no longer need, just issue the command remove node and specify the node ID and that's all. Yes. So how to add nodes? Just start Zabbix server in a cluster mode and specify the node name. And by the way, the node names need to be unique. How to remove? Issue the command Zabbix server dash r h a remove node, node number, and that's all. So also very, very simple. So this was how to set up the cluster. Now the question is how to connect all those agents and proxies and other devices 
to your Zabbix cluster. And here are the answer. So let's start with the most uh, simpler scenario, the passive agents. If you want to set up your passive agents, it's absolutely simple. In the server field, which is responsible for incoming connections, you are specifying the addresses uh, or DNS names of each node. Yes, in this scenario, we have ZBX node 1, ZBX node 2. So you just need to specify the addresses of both nodes and the agent will accept connection from any of those nodes. And it will just work. Very, very simple. Okay, now let's talk about the active checks. So active checks are always a little bit more complicated and they require uh, more parameters. They require host name and server actives. So in this case, you need to specify both nodes as a server active. But if you look, if you will look very carefully on the slide, you will see that I'm not using commas. I'm using semicolons. Yes. And this is new to Zabbix. So what's the difference? If you are using commas, that will mean that you have a different Zabbix server instances with different configuration, which is possible. If you will use semicolons, this means that this is a cluster. Yes, so you are telling your active agent that you have a cluster of two nodes and then agent will understand that this is the same instance, the same Zabbix, just two nodes and Zabbix will check the availability of uh, each node and report the data to the correct node, as in this example. Proxies. So what about proxies? Uh, the same as with agents. We have active proxies, we have passive proxies. So for passive proxies, you just need to allow connections from uh, any address of Zabbix server. Yes, you're specifying, specifying all the nodes and connections will be accepted from any node. If you have active mode, you need to specify all addresses of uh, Zabbix servers, but once again, you need to specify them using semicolons. Yes, don't use commas, use semicolons to specify them and it will work. So let's conclude how to set up the Zabbix cluster in 10 minutes or less. So first, you need to start Zabbix server in H availability mode. Yes, remember this uh, parameter which specifies the, the node name and that's all. Next, you need to comment out the Zabbix server and Zabbix server port in front end. After that, the front end will detect the node automatically. Then, if you are using Zabbix agents, specify server or server active parameters. If you are using proxies, specify the server parameter for proxies. If you are, if you are monitoring other devices like SNMP or, or whatever, so make a proper configuration for those devices to send information to all nodes or to accept connections from all nodes depends on the equipment and basically enjoy your Zabbix server cluster. So what can I say? It's easy to set up. It's simple and stable. So designed for everyday use. Um, if you want to have more information about Zabbix cluster or if you want to have more, uh, let's say, experience, you have two choices. You can attend our uh, summit workshop, which will be provided by me, and we will have a very uh, simple and fast setup of Zabbix HA cluster. Also, if you want to have more expertise in this topic, this will be provided as a part of our Zabbix certified professional training program. Yes, so you can uh, attend our Zabbix certified professional and get even more information, more detailed information and more expertise on this. Okay, so this was all uh, this year uh, from my side 
and see you next year. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Kaspers, for a great detailed explanation. Um, we do have a couple of questions about the HA, though. Uh, so, first off, what about the HA for Zabbix front-end? How can we set that up? Uh, actually, that's not a problem at all, because it's officially supported already from Zabbix 5.4, I think, so you may set up as many front-ends as you want, it's officially supported, and just don't forget to specify the external address, so all those front-ends will, uh, will connect to the correct node, and that's all. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Next up, a bit about the performance. So, is there a performance impact on the network or the database or something like that, any other components when you set up HA? Uh, I really don't think so, because there is a heartbeat involved, yes, which means every node will send a heartbeat message, which actually is a very small database query on a very small table with a few records. So this means maybe some bytes of excess traffic and maybe some very small queries, but this must not be something really serious. Yes, so you will not see any impact on performance, I think. All right, that's uh, really great. Um, next up, for people that want to migrate from, say, CoroSync or maybe any other solution that they have in place right now, a third-party solution, to the native Zabbix HA, how would they go with that? How would they migrate to the native Zabbix HA? Uh, so, the most complicated part would be to remove your existing uh, solution, yes? So, you need some expert who can professionally remove your existing HA setup from operational system. After that's done, it's very simple. You just need to upgrade Zabbix to 6.0 and you need to write the same configuration settings. Yes, And remember, if you are upgrading, then the configuration files will not have those lines. So just add those HA node address and node name to your configuration and start Zabbix on both nodes without third-party solution, and you will have a native Zabbix cluster already running. That's all. Yeah, I would probably suggest people uh, look at our documentation to see what those configuration parameters look like, and then copy and paste them and yes. specify them, and yes, then yes. restart or, your server. Yeah. Or you can look at, at the start of my presentation, I explain yeah, them. Exactly. Yeah, thank you a lot. I think you cleared up a couple of things for us, so it'll be easier for everyone to migrate to the native Zabbix HA. And uh, thank you for the great presentation. Thank you.